Oh, hello, Camille. Oh, hello, Jeremy. How are you? I'm excellent. It's really good to see you. It's great to see you. It was so nice catching up with you. We have we've had the pleasure of knowing each other and being friends for nearly 15 years. I know who you are. I'm very fortunate to know you, your team, senior business ascend 20-fold over the years. Why don't you tell our Oh Hello audience that are either listening to the pod or watching the VOD who I have the pleasure of speaking with? Well, thank you. I want to appreciate you having me on this uh, incredible podcast, and I could not be more excited for Oh Hello success. Thank you. I'm a mother. Uh, I'm a daughter. I'm a sister. I'm a friend. Uh, I'm a mentor. And I'm a founder. And I'm the founder of Talentfoot Executive Search and Staffing. Uh, we service uh, Series B funded startups to Fortune 50 organizations that are looking to essentially accelerate their growth via digital business. Uh, we have roughly 40 associates throughout the country and amazing. we'll be 13 years old next month. That is uh, amazing. It's been so fun watching you, watching you grow from, from a one person founder and CEO to growing a team that, that covers uh, so many different sectors, so many different verticals. Levels of expertise, uh, as you had mentioned, from obviously Series B to Fortune 50. And we're just so so pleased and to have you here. Part of the reason I thought it would be wonderful having you be a guest is because you are a female founder, you're an executive, and you are so empathetic. And that to me is, is inapproachable. And that to me is so important about what the Oh Hello network and tribe is that we're creating. Tell us a little bit more about what defines you. What defines you as a person? What defines you as a founder? Yeah, you know, I would say it took me some time to really understand what defines me. Uh, but over time uh, and studying a lot of incredibly successful people, uh, I was able to hone in on myself on really what does define me. And I would say uh, values, I'm a very values based servant leader. Uh, I've worked for some incredible leaders and some not so great leaders, and I've learned both what to do and what not to do as a leader, right? So I'm very you know, grateful for those experiences, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, and I'm very much focused around empowering others. I have been empowered by incredible people throughout my life, and it's made all the difference, right, in me pursuing my passions and my dreams. Uh, and I hope to continue to empower others um, for the rest of my life. With being able to empower others throughout the rest of your life, tell us a little bit about your skill set and how you would characterize it in terms of how you're going to be helping up and comers, people feeling lost, people feeling vulnerable through the Oh Hello community. Tell us a little bit about just your skill set and just your traits. Yeah. So, you know, one thing that I'm very passionate about is helping people find their strengths and identify their strengths, right? And so often, I think when we're very young, we're focused around trying to work on our weaknesses. And I very much believe, you know, work on your strengths and forget your weaknesses, because that's what's going to uh, really differentiate you uh, well above your peers, right? That is so, that's powerful. That's good. Keep on going. Good. Uh, and so, and, and I, in studying humans for almost 20 years now, uh, I've realized that we actually, the work that we enjoy most is typically the work that plays to our strengths, right? So uh, do, do you feel the same way? Do you I, I do. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Keep on going because part of the reason that I'm creating this this community and this platform is going to be launching very soon. Uh, but by the time that listeners are listening to it, it might be available is because of that pursuing different strengths, pursuing different interests based on what we know and what we feel good doing. Please keep on going. This is about you. Yeah. So, so, you know, I do believe that if you really own your strengths and you continue to expand upon those strengths and accelerate those strengths, right. That, you will then find work that you love. And if you find work that you love, you will find fulfillment and happiness. And if we had more happy people in the world, we'd have a more happy place. 
right? So, uh, you know, I really do uh, also believe that if you hone in on your strengths and you identify opportunities that allow you to unlock those strengths every day, you're going to make an impact on organizations, which is only going to impact your own professional growth, right? And your own career trajectory. In addition, the, the added layer of if you can find work and organizations that really tap into your purpose and help you find purpose uh, while bringing those strengths to the table, that's the recipe for, to me, you know, ultimate success and happiness. Love it. Success and happiness uh, absolutely are the end goals. And for so many people, you want to be successful, you want to be happy. What yeah. excites you? Oh, please I, go ahead, Camille. Jeremy, you know, I think it's success is, is defined in so many ways. Right. And I think it's really important to know what your definition of success is. Right. And I thought early on, if, if you would have asked, you know, the 20 year old Camille, what, what was success? I think I probably would have had an answer along the lines of climbing the corporate ladder. Right. Uh, and that's not how I define success today. No. Uh, but I think, you know, Young people, uh, and and frankly, anyone at any point in their life should pause and stop and really ask themselves, what is success to me? Because it's it's really unique to yourself. So all said, what would you tell your 25-year-old self looking back, knowing specifically that telling yourself to be able to to consistently re-engage and reevaluate how you define success, would that be an area of how you would, looking back, change. And I don't know, I, I, let, let me be a little bit more concise and crisp with my question. Sure. Shoot. What would you tell your younger self looking back after, after being in advertising and marketing and being an executive recruiter and founder of a well-respected firm, if you were to look back in your career and if you said, okay, X amount of years ago, if I could do X, it would be this. What kind of advice would you tell yourself? So I got lucky. Right. So I, I didn't necessarily know I was working towards my own version of success. Um, but early on, I worked for a crisis line and I got bit by the bug of impacting people's lives uh, who were very much uh, struggling uh, and realized the power of conversation. So that propelled a career into executive search after meeting an executive recruiter who I, I met and I realized that, wow, they're truly impacting people's lives. Yep. Uh, so, you know, I do, I think I got lucky, right? Because that is my personal, that is my, my purpose and my mission, right? Is to impact as many lives as I can. And I was able to find that through my work. Um, but I will say, and, and those that spend time with me, hear me say this often, there's two things that we have at the end of our lives. It's our memories and our relationships. And if I would have really, truly have known what my values were early on, which we touched on, right? Yep. If I would have taken the time to truly understand my personal values, I would have probably have been more intentional about those that I decided to bring into my life personally and professionally, right? I would have ensured that I was joining organizations and leaders and teams that shared my same values because I do believe if you're if you surround yourself, you know, proximity principle, right, with those that have you know, share your same values, it's going to lead to fulfilling work, right? Because you're surrounded by others that truly want to live a similar life, right, and interact and respect other humans in a similar fashion to you, or whatever those values might be, right? Um, you, we treat people based on our values, and mm -hmm. and and vice versa, right? So with memories and relationships, who are some mentors that have made an, a, a profound impact on you? So I would certainly say my parents, uh, for one. Uh, I think they built an incredible amount of resilience uh, at a young age. Uh, I have memories, Jeremy, of family bike ride trips and probably 40 degree weather, uh, you know, in the rain and being the, the, the youngest of three, right, at the end of the line, right? And my parents <laughs> saying, keep up, you know, and I'm about a mile behind the crew, right? You know, I, I do think, um, you know, my parents, they've always believed in me, right? And I wouldn't have started a business at 28 years old if they didn't say, you're ready, you can do this. 
And then I've had a, a wide spectrum of mentors throughout my life. And I will say, as I reflect on these mentors and these relationships I have um, that are ongoing, these mentors come from different functional areas of business, right? So I have mentors that are CFOs, that I, I have mentors who are tech entrepreneurs. I have mentors who are chief people officers, right? Mm-hmm. I have CMO mentors, right? And so, but they they all bring a very diverse perspective and experience to the table. And I I do feel, you know, early on, many professionals feel that they they should really only seek out mentors in their functional area. So if they're a marketing manager, their obvious mentor is a CMO. But it's it shouldn't be that linear, right? So you know, I, I have a long list of mentors, and I'm so grateful for them. And I continue to seek out mentors, right? So I really respect the way that you explained not having a linear mentor and understanding whether you're a founder of a company, if you are a VP, a director, a manager, a supervisor, an associate, whatever level you are, that you can get tidbits of advice and expertise from people of all different experiences and industries and categories. I think that's really important because it makes us as people so much more well-rounded and less narrow, narrow minded, narrow focused, you pick up a lot more that you can give back to others by talking to different people, which also goes back to a few minutes ago when you were talking about just picking and choosing who you want to spend time with in terms of relationships, in terms of knowledge. So that was, that was insightful to hear that your mentors come from different, different areas. Anyone you want to give a shout out to, or they're just too many that, that you respect them all. There are so many, and I wouldn't want to hurt anyone's feelings for not being on the short list. Yeah, there are so many, but I will say, you know, going back to the values and mentors, I will plug Shelly Paxton, who is a coach and mentor within the Women's Chief Network. She actually was and is a leader that helped me refine my, my values, you know, in my 40s through an exercise. So she... This is a very simple exercise for, for your listeners. So Yeah, please tell us. Okay, great. I'm a Brene Brown fan, which is probably no surprise to you. Yep. Uh, Brene Brown has on her website a list of 100 core values. And Shelly walked me through this exercise uh, that I'm so grateful for. And it's essentially studying that those lists of 100 values and honing in on the top four to six that really speak to your soul, right? Uh, and so once you've, you've defined what those top four to six values are to really come up with an action plan of how you're going to have more of those values in your day-to-day life, what actions do you have to take to have more of those values in your day-to-day life? And even, even equally, uh, of importance is what actions do you need to stop taking to have more of those values in your life? And oftentimes it comes down to the people that you have in your life, the activities that you have in your life, how you spend your time. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that if I would have had that 20 years ago, uh, I think I'd, I'd, uh, I probably would be living a, some of a different life today. Amazing. Well, so part of the advice that you got from, from Shelly and from, from the Brene Brown uh, methodologies, uh, we're never too old to look back. We're never too old to keep on ascending. We're never too old. Mentorship and guidance and advice and just hitting that reset button is really important at any stage of our careers. Uh, Camille, we appreciate you so much. It was so good having you on. You rock. Oh, hello, listeners. Thank you so much. Bye, my friend. Thanks.